Okay, so welcome to this next video on uh, transfectable cyclic AMP sensors. So I now want to talk about another one that is a very related idea to this uh, sensor that we've seen in the previous video, which was PKA fret. In this video, what we're going to do is discuss something known as EPAC fret. Okay, so EPAC fret. Okay, so EPAC firstly, we need to discuss what EPAC is before we can discuss what EPAC fret is. EPAC is another cytosolic um, uh, target for cyclic AMP. So basically, cyclic AMP has three main targets in cells. So um, just let's just draw this little diagram out. What can cyclic AMP activate? Well, one of them is that it can activate protein kinase A, and that's its main one. Another activity that it has is that it can activate cyclic nucleotide gated channels, which can affect um, the permeability of the membrane to certain ions. Okay? And the final one is that it can activate this protein known as EPAC. Those are the three main tar cellular targets of cyclic AMP. Okay? Really, that summarizes this whole playlist, really. Uh, protein kinase A is obviously the most important. But EPAC here uh, basically stands for... We're going to look at this one, by the way. All the calcium uh, sensors can be grouped into this. We've looked at protein kinase A. Now we're going to look at EPAC. Then we'll look at cyclic nucleotide gated channels. So, EPAC then, what does it stand for? It stands for the exchange protein... Exchange protein activated by cyclic AMP. So the exchange protein activated by cyclic AMP. Um, by cyclic AMP. Right. Okay, so um, basically cyclic AMP binds to it and changes its conformation. And we can use that to uh, make an altered version of EPAC that will act as a, cal as a cyclic AMP sensor, basically. So, Basically, when EPAC is in its uh, non-activated state, so let's draw our cyclic AMP binding site here. When it's in its non-activated state, it basically has a conformation like this. It's often drawn like this in cartoons. Uh, so what we can do is we can attach on a, a cyan fluorescent protein uh, to one end of this protein, uh, to one end of this EPAC, this exchange protein activated by cyclic AMP. And we can attach on a different uh, fluorescent protein to the other end of uh, the exchange protein activated by cyclic AMP. And the basic underlying principle here is that when cyclic AMP binds to this, it will change conformation, it will move these two fluorophores further apart. So again, what you're going to get is you're going to get the lo loss of a threat signal uh, when uh, cyclic AMP binds. So, it's the same principle then again. When you can send in a frequency of UV specific to cyan fluorescence protein. So this frequency of uh, UV will not activate the yellow fluorescence protein. So uh, this um, frequency of UV activates the cyan fluorescence protein, so you get blue light coming back out again. Um, but uh, because the cyan fluorescence protein and the yellow fluorescence protein are originally close together, so EPAC is in a conformation that means that the places where you've tagged this cyan fluorescence protein and this yellow fluorescence protein onto the exchange protein activated by cyclic AMP protein are close together. So, what you get is a bit of transfer of energy. So you get resonant energy transfer, okay? And then what will happen is that the yellow fluorescence protein will then emit yellow light. So, when cyclic AMP is not bound to EPAC, when you send in this frequency of UV, you'll get blue and yellow light coming back at you. But, now let's say cyclic AMP goes up. So here is our cyclic AMP molecule again. If cyclic AMP goes up, what happens now? Cyclic AMP is going to bind to that cyclic AMP binding site on this EPAC protein. So let's draw that in. So here's our EPAC, and here's cyclic AMP now bound. Uh, and basically what that is going to do is it's going to change the conformation of the protein. And when the uh, conformation of the protein changes, the idea is that we will have tagged on this cyan fluorescence protein and this yellow fluorescent protein in portions which will now be moved apart, basically. So cyan fluorescence protein stays down here, and yellow fluorescence protein might move up here. 
So they're now further apart. And remember, this is just a cartoon. But they, the protein changes conformation so that these two fluorophores are now further apart. Now, if we fire uh, this UV frequency that corresponds to cyan fluorescence protein in, what's going to happen is we're going to get blue light coming back at us, but the two fluorophores, this cyan fluorescence protein and this yellow fluorescence protein, are now too far away for energy transfer to occur. So you don't get the activation of the yellow fluorescent protein, and you don't get yellow light being emitted back at you. So you will see a loss of the yellow light that was coming back. You will see a loss of the fluorescent resonant energy transfer signal, basically. And that will indicate that cyclic AMP has gone up.